Oh, thanks for joining us today. Um, it's it's a true pleasure to be back with the Simplot Games and all the Olympians. And I hope there's a bunch of coaches and athletes out there eager to learn some new information to be able to um, put to work for their for their training, whether it's um, learning how to run better, the running or learning how to jump, learning how to throw. We have so many great Olympians here to to share their words of wisdom. And I'm going to be talking about um, different things relating for the pole vault. Obviously, everybody knows me for the pole vault. That's where I won my medal. And um, instead of talking about technical things of being on the runway at this moment, I will keep time open for us to maybe throw in if you have a video of, of one of your training sessions. And if we have time at the end of my second session to maybe go through a couple of those videos um, and I can give you some words of what I think can, can uh, work for you. But for me, I think when John talked, it really spoke um, volumes. I know when, when things hit in March, we had to close my facility and the kids were like, what do I do now? And I knew that we couldn't jump but I knew that we could do a lot of things, whether it was going to a park and finding bars or finding a nice flat grass field where we can do some gymnastics uh, application to be able to keep moving and keep feeling like we're, we're, we're moving towards something better. Um, no. um, anyway, so instead of talking about technical things of being on the pole vault runway, I really wanted to talk about the gymnastics side of it. Um, I was fortunate enough to go to Idaho State, and that's where I had uh, trained under my college coach and went to the Olympics under Dave Nielsen. And when I first came to Idaho State, I was a heptathlete. I had never touched a pole vault pole. But because I had such a great background in jumping and throwing, I was one of those athletes that were picked to try the pole vault before women's pole vault was a big deal. And um, I'm considered one of the pioneers. I was one of the first women to actually go out, compete internationally and then ultimately win, win medals and, and a gold medal. Um, but my coach's wife owned a gym up in the university. I remember those first few sessions when I would take off, I had no idea where I was in the air. And my coach said, well, Stacey, if you're going to try to do this pole vault thing, we better get you comfortable in the air. And luckily enough, we could jog down to the gym and start using some of the gymnastic apparatuses. And what that did for me was just help me to understand the mechanics of how the pole should move and where my body should be when I'm in space. So um, that's really the point that, that I really wanna get across to you. And I also wanna say that you don't need to have an expensive gym. Um, I was telling my kids here in Boise to go out and find um, an elementary school that has a bar, go out and find a flat grass field, do gymnastics work, you know, get up on your hands, do handstand walks, forward rolls, pull-ups on the bars, um, bubkas on the bar, anything that you can do, swinging your hips above your shoulders to get in those inverted positions that we don't usually talk about until later in the season. Um, first and foremost, I always preach and coach, the run is the most important thing. When kids come to train with me, we work on sprint mechanics because you need to be a sprinter on the runway. 90% of the pole vault is you coming down the runway. So if you're running and losing energy on the runway, the plant and takeoff is gonna be a hot mess. But if you can um, understand how to run with, with rhythm down the runway and execute a tall takeoff and then become a gymnast in the air, things become very smooth. So people ask me all the time, how do you make it so smooth? And I, I wanna say, gosh, I wish I had some of those videos from those first, first years of learning how to pole vault because it did not look like this, right? And I think you as an athlete, a young athlete growing, you want it to feel smooth. You want it to look pretty, but know that you're going through a lot of different stages in your growth as a pole vaulter. Um, kids send me videos all the time because I have that option on my website to, uh, for me to analyze videos of training. And I try to give tidbat, tidbits of information back for them to keep continue to work on their training. And I say, gosh, if you can swing on rings or rope or high bar, that will help you to understand the inversion part of your, your, your jump. So um, I don't know if we've gotten to my video yet, but is there any questions yet that anybody has? Um, I wanna give out my email real quick, just in case you know an athlete or coach is sitting back and you have a video of one of your athletes or you as an athlete have a video that you wanna share. 
just be able to pull it up and send it to my email. And then Steve, who is my admin here at my house, he's going to collect those. And if we have time at the end of that second session, we will go, um, we'll go through it. So write this down real quick. It's just going to be my name. It's Stacy Dragila. You can see it up in my window bar, Stacy Dragila at gmail.com. So you can send me a video. Uh, make sure you put your name in so I can reference you. Maybe let me know what poll you're on and um, what run you're running from. Just give me as much information as you can in that little uh, video. And then I will try to help you um, maybe pick one or two things that you can continue to work on once, once we leave this clinic today. Um, Steve, are we ready? Almost. Almost, they said. I don't know what's going on. Um, okay. Hey, go. My, um, what, did, what did I do? You're perfect. I'm perfect. It's <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to share your presentation. I'm going to go in the group and uh, I'm going to run your video. So we're good. Watch. Okay. So thank goodness for Steve Thomas being here today. Okay. okay. Can you see me? I can see. Yeah. Thank you. Perfect. Is that good? Yep. Okay. All right. So I'll just be in. I'll, can everybody okay. hear me? I don't know if you can give me a thumbs up or. Yep. We can hear you and see the oh. slides. Great. Okay. Great. So you just talk and I'll. I'll you, okay. So I'll we, I basically introduce myself. I'm an Olympic pioneer. I'm a coach. I'm a mentor now. Um, I own my own facility here in Garden City, which is between Boise and Meridian. Um, I coach local kids. I coach kids that are satellite kids. I coach kids that can drive in two, three, four hours. I coach kids that fly in for a long weekend. So if you're a kid that's looking for some training and are able to come in via an air, you know, fly in or drive in. Um, also, you can use that email to reach out to me. Um, pole vaulting is a very small niche of, of people. Um, there's a couple great clubs, you know, scattered across the United States. And if you're looking for a club to be able to train in, let me know that as well. And I will try to find one that's close to you. Um, but if you want to travel and see me, I also run camps and clinics and you'll see that on my last slide. But I know we're in the middle of season right now and I have kids flying in for one or two um, day sessions to kind of hone in on their drills because a lot of schools in California and Seattle I know have not been training so they're just trying to get caught up to speed so they can compete at that at that uh, district championships or hopefully the state meet. Um, so feel free to, to email me with any questions you guys have and I can try to point you in the right direction. The next thing is just a short video of who I am who I was and hopefully where I'm going. In case you didn't know already. It's the same thing. Sorry. It's all inspirational music. Dun da da dun 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 dun. <laughs> so that was me at the Olympics. Here I'm just a training session, talking about the things that are needed for the pole vault. Um, people that were the naysayers of the women uh, trying to pole vault, they thought that the women didn't have upper body strength um, and that um, we would be a novelty. We would be here one day and gone the next day. But as we kept competing at the international level, we just became stronger and better. This is a snapshot of where I came from. I grew up on a small ranch doing rodeo, raising project steers for the fair. So I grew up in a natural environment where putting hay in the barn, lifting big you know, hay bales, putting them in the barn, um, maneuvering big animals around just gave me upper body strength. So the environment that I grew up in, maybe a little bit longer, I wasn't doing weights when I was a young kid. And this flashes back to the Olympic trials where I then made the 2004 Olympics um, with a nice clearance. This is me jumping my clearance at the Olympics. This is me world, gosh, it's going so fast, world championships winning, um, another jump at the Olympics. And I think this goes to me getting my beautiful medal placed around my neck and 
me just remembering that this is a symbol of all the things that I had done. Like John said, that was a stepping stone to where I wanted to go. Um, a lot of people thought that, oh, you'll retire after winning a gold medal. You worked so hard for that. But for me, my jump wasn't perfect at the Olympics, believe it or not. I made a lot of errors and it made me hungry to do more, to do, to do better, to, to jump higher, to, to be swifter, to be faster on the runway. Um, I really love John's speech today because it really spoke to me. And I hope, hope a few of those things uh, touched you as well to understand that, you know what, we had this huge pandemic, we had setbacks, but there's a whole, there's a whole future out there for us to get better to think about things differently and to not let this bring us down. Um, so I think today is kind of that launching pad for all of us to tell you as athletes, to tell you as coaches that we're not gonna be <clears throat> sitting around, woe is me. This is a chance for us to learn and to grow from the things that we've gone through. Um, so like I said, we're gonna be talking about postural gymnastics for the pole vault. And this slide here really kind of shows the positions um, that we want to be in as, as pole vaulters. This, I call it a chest in, chest out stretch. We've, it's a still picture of one of my post collegiates um, using a high bar to create a really nice stretch through his body. Um, when I coach somebody and I, and I tell them to hit these positions, you can see if you've been pole vaulting long enough that you want to create this, this C position, this backward C position in your body. You're fully stretched from your hand all the way through your your chest all the way through your hip extension all the way through your foot. So if he had his other, his drive knee up, you would see this beautiful position. You can go to the next slide and see our world record holder, Mondo Duplantis in that very similar position that Steven was just in on that high bar. Um, his arm all the way down through his back, through his glute, through his runoff foot, he's creating this backward C. There's a lot of energy moving up and through his takeoff and he's created this stretch. If I put you in this position and pretend like you're a rubber band, like you're fully stretched at that moment, if I let go of you from your toe, you could be able to whip that trail leg and continue to move your hips and roll to the top of the pole um, so you can create this nice vertical line on the pole and try to catch the pole before it completely uncoils so you get that post flight off the top of the pole. Okay, next slide. Um, so the things, the elements that we're going to talk about, the things that I have in the gym are, um, the floor apparatus, the bars, the rings, the rope. Um, there's four different things that we can work on. Um, like I said, you don't have to have a gym per se. You can buy, you can buy rings on rogue, you know, um, website or an Amazon website for like $50. You can hang them from a tree. You can hang them from a high, um, you can hang them from the goalposts at, at the school. You can hang them from rafters in your barn. I mean, I know I have a lot of kids that live in rural Idaho. They hang them in their barn so they have a place to swing. Rope, the same thing. You can buy a rope for $80 to $100. It's a great investment. Again, you can hang it so you can do a lot of your inversion drills. The floor, you just need a, need a flat surface. I remember when, when I started doing gymnastics with Dave, we didn't always go to the gym but we tumbled around on the, on the grass field out, out at the track and a bar, you can go to a, a elementary school and find a bar and be able to do some of these things that we're going to show you. So you don't have to have a formal gym to get these things done. Some, some talking points, you don't have to have a gym, like I said, um, to, to be useful for the pole vault um, by learning and doing gymnastics drills, like the, the floor, the bar, the rings, the rope, athletes will gain an understanding of timing and energy needed to execute a well-timed vault. Like I said, the run is the most important. Then it comes the plant. And if you can execute those things uh, very well, then we can start thinking about how you swing on the pole. And if you've never swung on the pole in a tight fashion, like a gymnast, you're going to lose a lot of energy. So the more times you can get on the rings and the rope, you're going to understand the timing of how the pole should move as well. Um, and then the last point here, by opening the shoulders and creating a smooth arch, like we just showed through Steven and, and Mondo, the athlete will keep a stronger kinetic chain. We talked about that elasticity that we're trying to create. Um, if, if I was stretching that rubber band and I let it go, that would be you swinging and tapping to the top of the pole. If an athlete is too rigid or lacks that flexibility, you're gonna lose a lot of energy and you will not be able to swing 
um, as fluidly as you would like to go uh, to the to the top of the pole. So we're going to start with the floor, and I really start with some basic drills. Um, the first one is just forward rolls, um, and you know a lot of my kids are not gymnasts, so kids aren't going to be executing these really tight positions. But again, getting out in plane is huge. So you guys can write this down, but I know that um, this is being recorded so you guys can go back and look at it later. But forward roll is our first, first exercise. It's something that most kids learn early on um, as, you know, as a toddler. And then, you know, we kind of forget to do it. And then we kind of re revisit it as we get older, as we're pole vaulters. The next one is the backwards roll learning how to stay tight. And you can see my first athlete, he wasn't staying tight on that first tumble pass, um, trying to keep your chin tucked to your chest. So you create this, this hollow body and not a flat back. So you don't hit the ground smacking it, but by arching your, your head and neck, you're creating an arch on your, on your back. So this tumble is a little bit more smooth. Um, the next one, we already, yeah. Okay, the next one is candlestick jumps. So we have an, an athlete here rolling back on a mat, see that her arms are fully extended, kind of like when you get hit at takeoff, you wanna have your arms extended and she's rolling. We're gonna keep going with her, so I'm gonna keep talking. She's gonna roll her hips above her shoulders, trying to create a pretty straight line. She's trying to in, engage her glutes so the line is straight and tight. So when she swings on a bar or on, on, on her pole, her body is straight and tight. And every time that we play around with the gymnastics on the floor, I'm talking about keeping tight positions, engaging the glutes. So if you're not engaging, again, you're gonna be, gonna be loosey goosey on the pole. The next one is candlestick jumps with a single leg. This is, also, this is a two, two part. Um, one, you're getting that candlestick of rolling the hips over the shoulders, extending your arms, back like you're rolling back on a pole but then also getting a little bit of strength through isolating one leg or the other i have the kids do the single leg jumps we usually do five on each leg and you'll you can see the weakness on the non-jump leg and that's why we try to do both legs is to equalize the strength in both legs our event is very one-sided dimensional we you know we we hit takeoff constantly on that top arm we jump constantly off our left leg if we're right-handed vaulters so trying to equalize the body as much as we can so we're not injuring, injuring ourselves down the road. The next drill is a handstand forward roll. So we're trying to hit a handstand first, hit a tight line, tuck our chin to our chest and roll out of it. Some of our kids are better than others. So we keep training, right? Every Thursday in my gym is deemed uh, off the runway day, gymnastics day and one, this gives us a day of rest for our legs. We're not running, we're not doing sprint drills. We're only working on the aerial, the aerial components of the vault. So starting with the floor is kind of the nice transition into then going into rings, rope and high bar. So um, you can see some kids are struggling with it, but as, as they get better through the season, they're hitting tighter positions. The next one is a handstand pike roll. So just another element to, I kind of call it up the ante. Can you be a little, little bit tighter as you hit a handstand, roll out of it, keep your legs straight. She did a straddle there. Okay, Delaney's doing straddle. And then I think Steven kept straight legs. So we just add a little bit of fun to it. The kids are kind of not so serious on this day, having fun, tumbling around. And guess what? Especially for the women, um, women, really lack the upper body strength. If your athletes aren't in a weight room regimen right now, this is a great way to um, gain upper body strength while playing. So the kids are having fun, trying to encourage each other, yet we all know we're not level 10 gymnasts, but again, it's just about playing. Um, the next one is back extension to push up. I love this one. One, it's a little bit challenging because the kids sometimes are a little bit nervous to get their hips to move quickly and hit a, a push-up position. Steven's doing a pike. I'm not sure why I picked this video, but I thought Delaney was doing it. If we do it again real quick, Delaney pushed out to a push-up position. So I want you to do a backwards roll to a push-up position. And this drill just really teaches you to get your hips moving quickly. I find when I coach kids that 
we run really fast and then we hit the takeoff and then the, the swing is so slow. The run should really match the swing. And if you're running well and you're hitting a tall takeoff, the, the swing should be pretty fluid. So I'm trying to teach the kids through some of the gymnastics moves that after they hit their hands, they stretch through the shoulders, the hips need to come quickly. And so all of these lead up drills are to help you understand the flow of the swing. The next one is called a snap down. This is going into a handstand first, compressing the arms so there's a bend in the elbow and then trying to flick the feet down and trying to create a hollow space between your hips, trying to get your center of mass. If I had a bungee stretched across, it would be you pushing off the top of the pole, trying to teach the kids to flick the feet and then the hands are the last thing to push off the mat creating that hollow space by turning your thumbs in and having a nice arch over the bungee. And sometimes we do put the bungee out there. Um, so that is called a snap down. The next one we have is P-bar handstands um, to a fall. I've created P-bars out of PVC. If you guys want um, the dimensions on these, these are super easy to make. I have about six sets of them. We use them for a lot of strength maneuvers. But this is a great one, again, is just hitting that handstand position, really tight position, and then learning to trust to fall to a safe mat in a tight position. So again, hitting those shapes, hitting those tight lines, learning how to stay tight on a pole. We're trying to tie those two things together. The next drill that I have is creating stretch through the shoulders. So some of my athletes, especially my guys, aren't super flexible th through the shoulders. So Steven's one of my guys. He's my post-collegiate. And I thought he can't do a bridge to save his soul. So I thought, let's bring him over to the pole vault pit and have him try to do arches and try to push through his shoulders. And I asked him, how did that feel? He's got a lollipop in his mouth. He said, oh, I felt the stretch. I thought I had a, a video of um, Colby in there and she showed a little bit better stretch. But, but this is a great one. If you guys have your pits out, Again, he pulled his um, feet up underneath his bum. He pushed through his shoulders to create a, a bridge and then was able to kind of hold that. I was asking him to hold it for, you know, five to 10 seconds as we progressed throughout the season. And guess what? His shoulders became a little bit more flexible. Um, the next drill that we have, that's okay. Um, cartwheels. So, you be surprised how many kids can and can't do cartwheels. My boys didn't grow up, you know, throwing, throwing cartwheels around. Um, so my, my girls are typically better gymnasts than the boys. Um, but I, I, um, I usually have them do their good side and their bad side. So we do cartwheels on our good side, down the mat, and then our bad side trying to kick up over the top, trying to create that straight line. You can see Jeremy struggling a little bit better. He has gotten better over time. So again, you don't have to be awesome to do these drills. You just have to keep practicing. And through practice, we get better. And if we can get a little bit better doing something off the runway, I guarantee it's gonna to translate to the runway. Uh, thanks. <laughs> um, the next one is a round off. This one's maybe a little bit more advanced. Some of our guys just didn't, don't understand doing it, but again, playing and trying to get better each time is the name of the game here. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cartwheel squared off. And if you want to add an, an extra element, I do bring in the bungee from time to time and put it you know, across the, uh, the mat to see if they can have clearances and kind of then work on their spatial awareness as they do their, their round off. So that's a great one for them to cheer each other on and see who can have the best clearance over the bungee. The next one is walking on hands. This one I'm horrible at, but guess what? The more I did it during my career, the better I got at it. So if you fall down every time you try to hit one, get right back up where you fell and just keep trying to walk. Think about pushing through the shoulders, think about squeezing through the glutes, and over time, your body will align. Jeremy 
was really bad. He's getting better. You can see, I keep telling him to squeeze his glutes. Julie's pretty good. Um, she's really good about pushing through her shoulders. So we have a little bit of a competition who can walk on their hands the furthest. And Julie is clearly winning that race right there. Um, so again, I think that's kind of the last, the last drill I have for my floors. It's kind of the last um, strength move that I have before we move on to the next apparatus. Um, and having said that, I think we can move on to the next one. Okay, so the next one we go on to the bars. Um, I love the bars because I think it really helps you to get into that, that arch to hollow position that we're really trying to strive once we get on a bent pole. And even if it's a straight pole drill, you still wanna lead with your chest and you wanna have pressure through your hands to be able to move the pole. So Steven here is demonstrating that chest in, chest out swing. He's gonna start from a, a still position and he's gonna swing from his shoulder, creating that arch to hollow, arch to hollow and tapping his feet through um, to be very quick through the bottom of the swing. The next one is, we call, I call them tabletops. I'm sure in gymnastics, I think they're called lever swings. So if you're a gymnast out there and I'm butchering terms, I, I, com I completely uh, apologize for that. Um, so what we're trying to do here is it's more of a full body swing. He's going to have a little bit bigger swing. He's going to tap through the bottom. You can see his feet behind him with his chest leading the jump, much like you would be on a bent pole or straight pole. And then he taps really hard through his feet and let his hips rise. And then he's really tight and he's kind of in that tabletop position and he's squeezing, squeezing, squeezing tight through the glutes and through his shoulders, okay? All right. That's okay. Are you pushing buttons over uh, there? Things are going crazy. Okay. Okay. Okay, so the next one. Oh, I think. I think there was one more that should go. Can you go back one? I think we wanted to swing, swing a bootka first. It's usually how my progression goes. We're good. We're good. Okay. All right. Perfect. All right. So swing, swing to invert. So this is more of a full body swing. This is what you would see typically if you had a pole vault pole, right? You're going to be taking off, setting up a really nice takeoff and then tapping all the way to the top, trying to get our hips to rise. The big thing that I cue the kids on here is really that arch, trying to keep the feet behind you. And as you tap the, tra the trail leg through or both legs through, he's using both legs to tap through, you wanna push the bar back out. So it's the arch in leading with the chest. And as you feel that stretch and you can't hold it any longer, let the legs go while keep moving your hands. If you're laying on the ground and you wanted to do a V up, it would be, the similar action. You wanna move hands and legs together, creating this inversion position that Steven's hitting here on the bar. He's, he's squeezing his glutes to make sure that all the energy is going through his body and he's able to come all the way to the top of the, to the bar. Hey okay. Stacy, just as a time check, we got about four, three to four minutes left. Okay, and if, and if we, um, if I don't get through this session, we'll just spill into the next one with this. So just you let me know. Thank you. Okay. The next one is a static bootka. I had a really hard doing, really hard time doing this one um, early on in my career because it's pretty tough. Um, but Steven's showing off like a pro. We call it a static bootka. Um, what you're doing is you're dropping your shoelaces all the way down to that crossbar and then just working around trying to keep a straight line as best possible while raising the hips above the shoulders and dropping the shoulders. This is a strength move. Um, one that we can start with, I think the next slide should show a split leg bootka. If you're a beginner or you're having a hard time doing that static bootka is to split the bar. If you're right-handed, which Steven is, you're gonna have the right leg in front. You're gonna grip the bar like you would a pole vault pole and you're gonna come all the way down to the shoelaces because the big thing is, is that you wanna get stuck in the bucket. A lot of kids that I see send, sending video to me is that they might hit this really nice takeoff, then they swing, they break their hips, and then they're in this elevator ride very slowly to the top of the pole. 
So you're missing the pull to uncoil and then you're just gonna dump off, dump off over the crossbar or run into the crossbar. What I want you to work on is these hard positions. Him getting his hips very low and getting his shoelaces all the way down to that bar and then working out of that bucket position. Really trying to extend up the pull by keeping pressure on the hands and dropping the shoulders all the while squeezing the glutes, okay? I can't emphasize enough that you are now a gymnast and you may have not gone through formal gymnastics training, but remember, once you get on the pole, you wanna be as tight as you can because you don't wanna lose the energy that you've created through the run and through the plant. Okay, the next one is kind of just, I think an aerial awareness position, a little bit of strength. Um, I call it a chin up pullover. So we typically take two steps into a high bar. We try to get our chin up over the bar, lead with the chest just a little bit, and then tap aggressively, trying to not touch the bar or pull our hips up as high as we can before we touch the bar. So when I was training with some of the big guys, um, Dimitri Markov, Tim, Tim Mack, some of our world champions, gold medalists, they could tap this position so aggressively that they would go into a handstand and then fall off into a mat. I don't have that situation set up here in my gym where we could, you know, go to a handstand and fall to a mat, nor are my kids that, that dynamic yet, but this is that, that building block mat position. So it could be even more explosive, but Steven does a really good job showing what any beginner could really do. And sometimes I step in to spot this too. Sometimes kids have a hard time that they do a good job of getting that chin up hold, but then they can't quite get their hips to get over the bar. And I'm there grabbing the shoulder and pushing the small of the, the back so they can have that rotation over the bar. So you have two minutes, you might do just a brief breath now, and then they're going to automatically close your room at 1225. Okay. I think they just, is, did we just close out? Break out. I think they're going to move us here in just a second. Okay, so, hold yeah. that, okay. 46 seconds, give them your- Okay, so, so anyway, um, th those are some lead up drills to some great pole vault training. Again, I think the, the big key components are getting out and playing. You don't have to be awesome to be out there doing this. You could laugh at yourself a little bit because I'm not awesome at all these drills either, but I make my kids do it. And guess what? Over time, they've gotten better and it is shown on the runway. So I can't emphasize that some of these drills, you don't have to take them all out there, but if you can pick three, four, five of these drills and incorporate them into your training, I guarantee you're gonna start feeling how you need to be on a pole, whether it's a, a straight pole or a bent pole. And again, you don't have to have a formal Okay, I had no idea that high jump was so technical. Thanks, Dick. That was just awesome and inspirational. I loved it. I want to welcome everybody back from the break, and I, I'm sure that everybody enjoyed.